LHS, welcome back to your Blue Devil News. I'm Ariana. Anyone that would like to run for class office for the upcoming school year will need to attend the student council meeting on April 11th and B211. Also, the student council officer mixer is Monday from 2.30 to 3 in the library. Please make sure your coach or sponsor has emailed Ms. Robinson if you will be attending. There will be a GSA meeting in Ms. Robinson's room today from 2.30 to 3.30. They will have a special guest speaker. FCA will have a meeting Thursday morning at 7 in the auditorium, and there is a Beta Club meeting tomorrow in Ms. Carpenter's room. This past weekend at the Cookville Invitational, Molly McElhiney set a school record in the girls' discus throw by throwing a 90 feet. Take a look. HOSA will have the Spring Marketplace this Saturday, 8 to 12, here in the Commons. In music news, Gigi White and Casey Brantley qualified for All-State Choir, and Presley Bush qualified for All-State Band. It has been a very long time since anyone from LHS has achieved this honor, and all of them will perform this weekend at Opryland. Congratulations, everyone. Seniors, please go buy guidance and fill out your information sheet. FCA has shirts for sale at the bank for $10. The freshman class has long sleeve shirts for 22 and short sleeve for 15. There are also a few comfort shirts left for sale at the bank. They are $15. The girls basketball team is selling TSSAA state tournament shirts. Students can order at the bank or pay online. 15 for short sleeve and 20 for long sleeve. 2X and 3X have a slight upcharge. They will take orders until Wednesday, April 17th. The math lab room is open from 2.30 to 3.15 in A104. If you need help for any math class, please stop by. Students can bring homework, quizzes, practice problems, notes, or anything else they need help with. Students can now sign up for the lip sync battle hosted by the Blue Devil players on April 26th. There is a sign up sheet on the auditorium doors. Groups can be no more than five people. The Humane Society will meet this afternoon in C200 at 2.30. If you bought a shirt, please wear it for a picture. Officer Brian will be our guest speaker and will bring his K-9 to the meeting, so have your questions ready. Now let's toss it to Zach for his review of Dying Light. Ah, uh, zombies. These walking undead cliches have crawled right out of the graves and right into our hearts. No matter who you ask, everybody knows these famous walking dead, either from the show of the same name or from the ever-so-present run-ins with these shambling corpses in popular games. What is up, LHS? It's Zach, one of your soda devils, coming to you with one of my personal favorites, Dying Light. Dying Light, in and of itself, is a zombie apocalypse slash horror game that's set in the infected city of Haran, a newly independent country that just broke away from British rule and that of which has a deadly virus turning people into ravenous monstrosities. Your overall main goal is to find a local gang member turned raider boss that goes by the name of Arias. In the beginning of the game, you can find yourself being transported to the island via aircraft and dropped to the island, where upon arrival, Rice's lackeys are waiting for you. Long story short, you have to fire your personal sidearm to escape the perilous situation, only for a viral to see you and ouch. That's gonna hurt in the morning. Other than the one bite in your arm, you escape relatively safe and sound. Well, as safe and sound as being infected sounds. Just be glad you didn't end up like the other guy rescuing you. Can a band-aid fix it? No? What about duct tape? Neither? Just be glad you got an infected hickey from the locals. After going through the intro and completing some quests, you finally get free reign of the game, with the world waiting for you to explore it and many new characters dying to see you, with some literally dying, it's easy to get caught up in the rush of adventure. So before you go and make the same mistake that I did when I figured out that I couldn't eat five hot chili peppers at one time, here are some things you need to know about the game. Number one, keep an eye on your experience bars. In the game Dying Light, you have two main experience bars at the top of your screen, one for parkour and another one for combat. These two skills only level up the more you use them, so if you want to level up your parkour per se, you need to vault over objects, climb into high buildings, and jump over rooftops, and generally be one of those YouTubers that do parkour. Michael. Parkour! Parkour! The more you run, the more points you'll gain. This is the same with combat. If you want to get better with weapons and firearms, you need to always engage in combat often, but it's always a good idea to have a backup plan. Number two, the day-night cycle. Dying Light strives to be as realistic as it can get. Well, most of the time anyways. 
I mean, zombies. Come on, right? Right? Anyways, this game includes a day-night cycle, causing for some fast-paced action when traveling alone. You see, when it becomes nighttime, many of Haran's denizens will come out of hiding, causing them to chase you when you get spotted. If you want to live through the night, do not, I repeat, do not try to take them on. These predator-like shells of the human race are as deadly as they are fast, so look for safe zones or run like crazy until dawn. Get it? Until dawn? No? No? Okay. Number three, weapons and modifications. Haran is strewn with weapons, many of which are fairly easy to find and could probably scrap in later use, but some are extremely valuable and can be used effectively for an extensive amount of time. To further push the boundaries of awesomeness to some of these weapons, you can add different types of damage to your weapons. Some of these include some basic impact or bleeding damage by adding weights or nails, or to some downright awesome like fire or electrical damage. You haven't lived until you've seen a zombie get knocked back like he was hit by a train while on fire. And that's what you get for biting my arm. And my leg. And my neck. That's what you just get for biting me. Number four, utilities. Lastly, we save the survivor's best friend for last, the utilities. These simple and not so simple craftables can be found in your blueprints menu and should be crafted if you want to survive the Haran virus. These small utilities can be a medkit, a bomb, or even firecrackers. And trust me, firecrackers are your friend. Each one is quite unique in their own, but the firecrackers are the only noise making device that doesn't attract virals. So tossing these small for the July rolls on the ground can be the difference between life and death. These bundles of loud joy can attract zombies into a particular spot until it runs out of snap, crackle, and pop, in which case they'll disperse. This is very helpful in places where you're getting swarmed, or if you just want to mess around with some bandits. With all my points out of the way, it's time for the biggest question in game review. Should you play it? Yes. Not only does this game feature my favorite mythical world ending creatures, it also blends together two games that I love, Dead Island and Mirror's Edge, into one complete zombie slaying package. Next, this game has a really fun and intuitive movement system that can also be used as a combat strategy in late game, making yourself like Bruce Lee in Return of the Dragon, if Bruce Lee was an agent in a city full of zombies, and if he ran away from almost everything. Yeah, I don't think I've seen that one in the movies. Finally, Dying Light also has a good and compelling story, one with more twists and turns in the Grand Canyon on steroids. It also comes with a multiplayer game mode so you can complete objectives with your friends. Or not. It's survival of the fist, after all. And to all of you people asking what it plays on, you'll be happy to know that Dying Light is available on Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC. It does include DLCs that can be bought either online or by grabbing the Enhanced Edition, however, but it's not necessary to the main game if you have it or not. So yeah, if we're up to me to give this game a rating out of 10, I would give it a solid 9 out of 10. Not only does this game have a fun and exciting world to play in, it's also full of mystery and danger. The reason it didn't get the full 10 out of 10, however, is because some of the content had to be bought in order to get the full experience. But in the end, you really didn't need it, now didn't you? Hey, I never said games were cheap now, didn't I? Like the video? Want more videos by me? Come on down to the BDN room and leave a suggestion for what game I should review next. And as always, be cool, stay in school, and stay tuned for your Blue Devil News. The Spring Dance Showcase is Tuesday, April 16th at 6.30 p.m. Admission is $5. FFA Plant Sale begins this Wednesday. Regular hours are Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Special hours are Saturday, April 13th from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Good Friday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. And they have hanging baskets ranging from $10 to $15 and many more options to choose from. Signs will also be posted in the median on South Hartman. All of the plants in the greenhouse are grown and cared for by the students in the greenhouse management class. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., the Blue Devil Rugby Football Club will face off against Siegel High School at home, Walter J. Barrett's football field. This is the last home game of the season and is also free admission. Please come support your Blue Devils. The Choir Pop Concert is Thursday, April 18th at 6.30 p.m. Admission is $5 and it is also a fundraiser concert. For the next few weeks, LHS Football is selling world's finest candy bars. The cost is $1. Find any football player and buy one. Cheer tryouts will be April 10th through the 12th in the small gym from 2.45 to 4.30. Packets can be picked up in B203. That's all the news I have today, LHS. I'm Ariana, and this has been news to you from the White and Blue.